Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting Wednesday, May 30th, 2018 at 7.03 in the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Would you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of May 2nd and May 16th? Yes, I make a motion to approve May 2nd and May 16th as Second. presented. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Wait. Wendy, do you want to give us your report? Oh. Okay. Um, just a few things, and again, I'll probably talk a bit more during the meeting. Um, I received a letter today from um, the Franklin Regional Housing Redevelopment Authority um, that put our block grants together and saying that they're time again. So I wrote back and said we'd probably be interested. And I also wrote Glenn Oland back, who Carolyn has spoken about before, um, say I'd like to meet with him soon to talk about this and also um, the other projects you had talk talked with him about, senior housing or assistance with uh, development of the church next door. So um, segueing from there, um, I received and I have the cover letter from council in your packet today, um, kind of by surprise, but it's not you know, something we've been expecting for a year, um, the paperwork for the transfer of the church to the town. Um, I, because I was unaware that this was right about to happen, um, it still had Carolyn's name on, so we as chair to assign these, so I've asked for that to be updated, and um, I'll have the whole package. Um, well, I'll have more information for you at a, at a future meeting once we get that straight. Now, it will take some time. There, there's a process in which you sign this, and then it has to go to court after that. And but I don't, I don't you know, it's just a matter of scheduling, I believe. So, I, I think um, because it's just some, it's it's our local court. I yeah, mean, this could happen with like in a couple of weeks. Well, you have to sign the paperwork yeah. first, so I will, I'll put that on your um, neck. Well, it need, the paperwork needs to be corrected. Then you need to uh, vote and authorize your signature, and uh, Kip would sign as Henry. I would get that right. And um, and then go from there. So yeah. just I mean, so it's, that's really exciting. Carol, when you said our local court, would, would it go through local probate here? And not yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, it, then it goes up. Yeah. Well, it's already been through the... Um, you know, with the, with the attorney general. Okay. It's, you know, so now it just goes to our local court for the proposed judgment. Well, I was just reading the very last sentence yeah. there, and it said it had to go back to Boston, so I didn't know if that that's, was. He's the attorney for the okay. church. Yeah, no, that's just um, the church okay. attorney. But, but there was a, I thought there was a, a, not a process they were going through with the courts previous to this, so I'm a little bit confused. But I guess now it happens after this paperwork is done. And they had a choice of either a court in Boston or a local probate court. So I, well, it's up to them to decide how they want to proceed with this. And I believe they were told we can move things a lot quick, more quickly locally than probably a... Yeah. Sure. Uh, so that's just really exciting. That is great news. Yeah. Um, who was asking me today? And I'm glad um, Dick is here since he was involved with this conversation. I don't remember who was asking. Oh, it was a reporter, I think. I don't recall. There were so many people, as there usually are. Uh, the question about once we have ownership, what we can use the building for. And I know that before in the past, um, when you were the building commissioner, Dick, you said nothing. <laughs> so I think just to get a heads up with you and um, the current building commissioner to start thinking about what uh, we would need to do just to use the building as is. And I'm not asking you to answer that right now, but just to be prepared to help us along in that process. I'll give you a short version, okay? The, there's a new section and an old section of the church, okay? 
the sanctuary section of the church would be off limits because of some structural problems with the floors and stuff. So they would basically be off limits. Um, you would have to do some things like handicap ramps accessible and you would also have to change the bathrooms to handicap two handicapped accessible bathrooms. And if you close off the sanctuary, short version of the story, close off the sanctuary part, uh, have a fire alarm system, et cetera, et cetera, the bathrooms installed, the handicap ramps installed, uh, and have two access, you'd be okay. And but, use uh, of the kitchen? The I recall in a walkthrough we did. Yeah. The kitchen has a non-compliant uh, range hood, right. but right. you absolutely could use the kitchen. You just didn't do any cooking until you corrected the range hood. So, and it, it, is, it is correctable, fixable. Uh, you can, uh, we just had somebody install a range hood in town. They found a used one and found it very reasonably priced and got it installed and renovated, and it, it's fine. So and this one doesn't need a very big range hood and stuff, but there's an Ansel system, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. There's some expenses. So, yep. yeah. so I think it would be useful to have um, follow-up, sit down, talk through it with you and the uh, building commissioner, Yeah. maybe yeah, the other there, inspectors as well, to really know what we can yep. and cannot do. And, and in order to do whatever... Uh, we essentially would want to do, and I think mostly the request has been just to use the large room space they have there for activities, um, yeah. not just the seniors, but other community groups. Um, and we probably have to check with our insurance right. company as well. But we really need to sort this out before we it, use the building. You could, you, you can come up with some estimates for that pretty easily for the bathrooms, the ramps, and stuff. We've been in there many, many times. Yep. I, I believe Trevor's, I've been in there with Trevor, with Kip, and Carolyn, and it's not that hard to come up with things. We have the wiring inspector, the building inspector, the plumbing inspector. We just want it all written up. That's Yeah, what I have do. everybody weigh in on it. And they can, you, you can come up with a cost analysis pretty quickly okay. that'll, that'll allow you to continue to use it. You just can't continue to use it like it is right now because it's not up to code. Right. right. Well, just a quick question about access. Since the primary access has been through that sanctuary space. Well, the primary access would have to change. The primary access, the ones you're supposed to use, okay? It's like, this is like people using a side door to get in a house and they have a front door they never open. Right. As long as you have the proper access, egress, from the rooms, mm -hmm. to that particular room to the exterior, you're okay. okay. And that's, several people have looked at it. There's been some real good suggestions about how to put a ramp in the side and put another door in very easy. We've had everybody over there. Bruce St. Peter's has been yeah. over there. We've, we've, uh, I think we've had so many people with so many opinions that mm -hmm. uh, I think it can boil right down to you can get it so it's usable mm -hmm. and then what you decide to do with the remainder of the building is another right. issue well, that's that's our next big yeah. challenge <laughs> okay okay yeah. thanks thank you, thank you thanks. dick um the other thing i had was i still have not heard and i've been trying to find out what's going on with the dumont uh sale mm -hmm. so i can't figure out when we'll have a special town meeting till we know about that I've been trying, and I will keep trying to find out. Have you, you you've tried to contact them directly and, um, and return? I call have. The council's been in touch with their council, and that's uh -huh. where who that I've been working through more recently. If, go right ahead. <laughs> no, I, I guess I would just I'll reach out to, I think it was Eric. Yeah. Go and I'll see where he's at, and right. unless there's, I knew that they were working on their tax arrangements and right. uh, something with the state. Um, I don't know where it's at. I haven't followed up okay. at all on it. So, Do you happen to know what our drop-dead date is based on the one we have now? I think it's July 9th. Okay. Um, but, you know, Barbara and I sat down. She's got to do, because of the law, a certain time period for voter registration, all this. So we, we had to back into something. Um, so uh, we were looking, actually, at a late June meeting. So. Okay. It gives time. I mean, 
how it's only a two week posting for the town meeting so if it's we not only we also have to figure out the voter registration piece and i i'm sorry i don't know it off the top of my head but there's it's not that simple as a two week posting unfortunately all right is there anything else no but nope. please call him <laughs> i'm more in the meeting so i'll stop okay great um well, it's pretty close to 7.15. Do you want to go ahead and start discussions about the uh, issuance of the off-premise wine and malt licenses? Um, the people under consideration is uh, Deerfield's International Market at 265 Greenfield Road, Cheslick's Market at 55 C North Main Street, and Bittersweet Bakery at 470 Greenfield Road. Any input? Um, well, I'll speak first. Um, it's been a, been a hard kind of decision to think about, um, put a lot of thought into it in the last couple of weeks of, um, unfortunately, you only have two. And, um, and then, uh, so I'll just give my opinion and then you guys mm -hmm. could discuss how you feel. Sure. Um, based on the presentations and the information that we have received, um, you know, the quality of it data we have and the um, tips training that kind of stuff um, my recommendation is is for uh, Cheswick's market and bittersweet bakery at this time um, I, I would entertain you know which we've passed uh, oh okay sorry okay keep going you're good all right um, so based on the last uh, our town meeting we were maybe thinking about um, Petitioning the state legislature for for other um, other possible yep. you know liquor licenses in the future, um, but just based based on what I saw in the hearings, what we have for data, that, that's kind of my recommendation at the moment. But, um, curious, you know, if anyone else has anything else to say. Um, I guess uh, my thing would be that we would apply for additional license. Um, so that Deerfield's International Market could get a license once they have the TIP training. They could submit the TIP training to us mm -hmm. and we would hopefully petition for additional license, start that process. Do you have an idea of um, how long that is, Wendy? Um, no. That's a good <laughs> because recall we went through with um, the procurement legislation. Right. We thought that would go quickly. Sure. I mean, they, the legislature has their sessions and uh, their session and it goes through a process they can't guarantee us you know anything plus no we'll still have our well if we do this before January we'll have our same delegation right uh, our yeah. legis our, our representative mm -hmm. um, but you have not discussed or come to consensus as to either wh whether you want to submit additional yeah. legislation right. um, I was looking into because I recall that in other places I've worked they've they've had seasonal licenses but I believe those are for on-premise only um, it's a way of giving it having when you run out of licenses but it doesn't really make sense for an off-premise because right. they have to work with purchaser with distributors and at any rate um, I think that's this is what you have to go on right now and then you need to yes, talk about whether the next step is whether you want to look for more licenses so <clears throat> I, I'm okay with with um, bittersweet and Cheslicks, um, but I would like us to apply for the other one because if you look at the service area, there there is no immediate um, liquor available outside you know that area. Whereas right. it's just across the street from Cheslicks and it's up the street from Bittersweet. So I feel like it is it is I think tips training is very important I've always believed that mm -hmm. yeah. so I think that is the basis for making the this award but at the same time I feel like um, the international market should mm -hmm. uh, we should apply for them and then I don't know we I mean we should have a serious discussion if we only want one additional one right yeah. one or two or what, what we want. Um, my concern earlier was that you know, I didn't want us to have to be in case the Cannabis Commission made this deal about us having social consumption um, 
places or retail outlets. I didn't want us to have more than one, but because we're a yes community, they changed the rules already and mm -hmm. we have to go up. So if we apply for additional license, we still are only gonna have two Correct. required, um, potentially required um, establishments. So it won't impact us whether we have one or two additional licenses. Right. Okay. Um, so. Okay. All right. Um, and I agree with uh, Trevor and Carolyn with the, the presentation and the information that was presented. Um, I feel that Cheswick Market and Bittersweet Bakery are two are the, the better choices at this time. Um, and uh, we can go forward with uh, investigating possible um, increased uh, license numbers in the future. Um, so with that being said, does somebody want to make a motion to? Make a motion to award the um, uh, off-premise wine malt licenses to Cheswick's Market at 55C North Main Street and Bittersweet Bakery, 470 Greenfield Road. I'll second so, that. So and I, I would just like to add that we pursue, you know, we let um, Deerfields International Market know that we'd like them to do the tips training mm -hmm. and okay. we will pursue a, a license. Okay. Them. Any okay. other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Just a comment. Obviously, I don't have them prepared because you didn't, didn't know what you were going to decide right. whether you'd offer course. any, one, two, or three. Uh, or no, not three. <laughs> Can't do three. Uh, so we'll have them prepared for you. Okay. okay. We've got a few minutes before um, our 7.30. Yep. And do you mind if I make a couple comments? Sure. So I just wanted to comment on um, what a wonderful Memorial Day um, it was. It was lovely. celebration we had. Um, we all kind of marched and partook, partook in, the, um, in the celebration to, you know, Kathy Belanger and Gold Star Mother. Um, just uh, amazing speech every year. And um, she brought Greg's boots this time, which just kind of took everyone, everybody off their seat. Um, but it was, it was, um, it was just really nice. Every year I've done this so far, we've been in, in Frontier Auditorium because of the rain, but this year we were able to march, which is really nice to, to be able to do that and to come down to the center of town and see all the residents there waiting and, you know, and clapping and hearing the band and, and then a, a wonderful ceremony by, you know, pastors and, and reverends and then um, several, you know, veterans spoke, and then uh, to be able to march up, up to the other cemeteries, I realized we had so many in town, but I got my exercise that day. Um, and, then, and then to join uh, Deerfield Academy um, later in the, in the, in the morning, um, to have another wonderful ceremony up there, and then march to that, to that cemetery. It was just really special to be with our vets and, and to remember the ones that have you know, lay down their, their lives for us and our freedom. So that was re that was really great. Um, the second thing I wanted to talk about is today we um, we began interviewing for our C South County Senior Center Director. Um, we had three wonderful candidates and we had um, great discussion and they went to the Senior Center, you know, before and during and after our uh, um, interviews and, you know, they mingled with the, with the um, our residents over there and had some good questions and so it was good so we're in that process of um, getting feedback from the seniors and um, we have a meeting posted for next Monday to discuss it further and hopefully make a choice on a new director so that'll be really good. exciting so that's what I have good thank you uh, can I just yeah well I just wanted to ask Trevor if um, how are you making um, is Diane making a uh, Progress with our yes. with yeah, the she's grant. Doing a great, a great job. Uh, she's she, uh, Diane Cornwall is doing okay. an assessment for the senior center, and um, she's also helping in this interview process, which has been really really helpful. She's helped craft some of the questions along with Wendy, and um, it's been you know invaluable to have her insight That's on what, what we're looking for uh, uh, in a director, and and then also as she forms a, a report and assessment you know, hopefully by the end of June um, that our new senior center can take hold of and with the Board of Oversight, we can all get together and uh, move this process forward about, you know, finding them um, adequate space, adequate programs, Program. adequate funding. Um, it's a real goal of mine this year is to work on that issue, so. Good, 
Since we have eight more minutes, do you want to move down and do the uh, one-day special liquor license for Yankee Candle? Sure. Okay. I move um, we grant a one-day special license for the sale of wines and or malt be beverages for Hardwick Vineyards and Winery, LLC, at Yankee Candle Company the, at the Blueberry Festival on June 23rd, uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Second. Is there any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are you John Salmon? Oh, wonderful. Well, come up. Come on up and tell us. <laughs> I'm sorry. We normally we just that's just the background info. Oh, well, thank Hi. you. Hi. It was Thank you. Thank you. Good. Are you from Hardwick? I'm John Salmon, Hardwick Winery. Yes. I'm from where? You're from where? <laughs> I know where it is. Thank you. Okay. Great. We've been open 16 years now, and I've uh, been doing samples and tastings at um, at Yankee Candle for years. And now they asked us to actually come and, and uh, sell at their Blueberry Festival. Great. So, so wonderful. Right. Right. Fantastic. Absolutely. And that's on the um, 23rd. We'll get 23rd of June. Now, yes. Do we usually get a, a, a insurance certificate for that? Yeah. Yes, I believe it was submitted. Okay. Uh, Liquor liability. In Says so that here. I've got a yeah policy number. Yep. Okay, what's on the back? That's it. Okay, oh, yes. we're good. Okay. Thank yep. you. We're all, and, and we're all tip certified. Everyone's tip certified. Wonderful. Um, Thank you. We do this off. This on. Oh, no, absolutely. Appreciate that. Good. Okay. Okay. Next, I have to go to some of the local businesses here and get them to carry your wines. So I do. Uh, I do sell in Deerfield. Great. Uh, right at the four corners here. Deerfield there is package. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, I'm north. I'm north. I'm in about 200 different um, package stores and supermarkets. Wow, that's good. Good coverage. Thank you. It's great. Is it blueberry wine? <laughs> so yes, we have a blueberry. Oh, wine. you do. Okay. I was. I wasn't sure about that. Yes, absolutely. No kidding. So I've been making blueberry wine for four years now, and it's uh, getting to be one of my popular ones. Great. Cranberries are most popular. Oh. Yeah. Well, you can make wine out of those. You can make I wine would say my wife Is likes it a lot, but I don't want to incriminate her. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Great. Thank You're you all very set. Much Thank for you coming. so much right. for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, well, I'm not really sure how she manages this, so I will make you copy right now if you'd like. Great. I don't know why we do two if one goes to you and one we keep, but I'll just make a copy of the page for you. Do you want to do the one day liquor license for Eagle Brook School? Yes. <coughs> see that on the thing. Mm -hmm. What's yep. the date? June 8th and 9th. The reunions. Yep, I've got June 8th. Oh, let's see one. <coughs> she must have missed that one here. Yeah, must have missed it. Okay. So oh, I move we grant a one-day liquor oh, license. Oh, no, a two-day oh, liquor license. Right there is no space, no license to be needed one day. Hmm. We'll have to wait for her to come back. I don't know. I think we still have to do it, even though there's... Is this still the two-day, like, setup and right. takedown, or...? Are you wondering about this license? Yeah, for the two-day. Um, I think I was telling you about oh, this yeah, before. Oh yeah, there's two here. Which ones now? This Eagle is for Eagle Brook. Brook. There's yes. one for the eighth. They're and not one for selling the ninth. it. We don't need to give them a license. It, the, if we are, and I, I called Deerfield Academy to let them know that when they are simply providing it without people purchasing, there is no local, local licensing for that. So. Hmm. So for the reunions, we don't need to do it anymore. The reunion is the one they do sell it, apparently. At Deerfield Academy. Yes. So any. But all their other events, selling? they don't. So it's Eagle It's only selling? when they actually sell. Yes. So we're. Yes. So Eaglebrook is selling. No. So I took it off. The, do you have your annotated agenda? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. So, so, so I Deerfield can give this Academy back to you. Reunions, we yes, still sir. have to do the Moving on. license, but not Eaglebrook's. Right. Correct. Not, okay. It's only when they actually <laughs> sell it. To okay. the patrons. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, we are. Hmm. <laughs> do you, uh, um, so then do you want to do this? 
We yes, could do the do sewer, sewer commit. That's just the one page there. Okay. Do you want to make the motion or? Yeah, go ahead. I move to sign the sewer commitment for 2000 for the 2018 second half year sewer billing. I second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 If you want to read the details, you can. I'll do that. <laughs> the, yeah. the number of customers oh, okay. and the amount and all of yep. that. You may. So th um, this is for the second half of the 2018 billing cycle um, in the amount of uh, $477,966.41. Um, sewer consumption is $38,301,436 gallons, I would assume. Um, this is for 890 bills um, in the town. Thank you. Thank you. Was that, that was all one. Has it not been broken down into uh, what are those, management areas or? I'm not aware that it has. We need to no. go back and all visit right. that. I'll with ask because I, I do know that um, Brenda was keeping that separate because I know that Kevin and Keith had been dividing all of their info up. Okay. I'll all right, we her. need to talk with all the right. uh, treasurers again about that. I'll ask. The collector. <laughs> the same person <laughs> in that capacity, Ever the collector's <laughs> capacity. Yes, because if I recall, our prior discussion was about the software and being more guidance from the sewer commissioners, you, as to um, who this is, where mm -hmm. this area is, and mm -hmm. who this is. So, okay. okay. Uh, since it's a 730, uh, yep. we have a Board of Health public hearing for a piggery site assignment and uh, I'll read the notice uh, pursuant to general law chapter 111 section 143 the Deerfield Board of Health will conduct a site assessment hearing for a piggery to be located at 67 Stillwater Road South Deerfield Mass map 110 lot 4 on the assessor's map for the town of Deerfield the hearing will be held on May 30th 2018 at 730 at the Deerfield Town Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. So if we have the applicant here, come on up, Max. I also asked um, Mr. Kalashevsky, who's quite familiar with this process, to help guide the board. Sure. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, Max. Hi, Max. Go ahead. Why don't you tell us what you'd like to do here? And um. The idea was just to run pigs in the same operation that my cows are in and sell pork as well as beef. Um, buy feeders and sell them as finished. I won't be breeding any pigs. I won't be keeping any pigs through the winter. I won't be, you know, stockpiling manure. I'm, my neighbor's going to take all my manure. Um, it helps her with her mushrooms. So, uh, how many pigs are you planning to keep on site? Ten. ten. Just ten, ten at any one time. And the sizes of the pigs are you going to take? You buy them at thirty pounds, pounds and you sell them at two fifty. Okay. Right. So. Um, and what type of uh, shelter do we have for the pigs? I have calf hutches, the little plastic huts. Yeah. Um, and how, what kind of feeding mechanisms for the pigs? Are you going to feed them daily? They're going to be or? pasture raised, so they're going to mm -hmm. forage, and then they're going to have grain to be uh, like a supplement. Yep. Yep. If the, the, you know, they can't find enough to keep them, they prefer to forage. They prefer to plow through the dirt and find things in the dirt. And mm -hmm. when that doesn't happen, you know, they'll have uh, grain. Yeah. Because the whole point is to get them to two fifty. So. Right. And you said that your neighbor is going to be handling the, the manure for you in her mushroom. Yeah, um, if there's that. any constant, mostly the manure will be spread out in the pasture, but sure. if there's any concentrations or she she wants all the manure I can give her. Okay. I bet. 
So um, I'm just reading up some of this list of things. Yep. Are there any, uh, you know, wells of uh, potable water located in and around where the pigs are going to be kept? No. No. Okay. And there's no open bodies of water streams on the property or adjacent property. No. Max, do you want to? You said you only have ten pigs. Do you want to limit it to ten, or I, how do? You, I mean, do you envision? I don't see moving? selling more than ten. And my my whole point is to sell pork and not to sell animals. You right. know, and what I can sell as a finished product rather than the commodity of you know market pigs because it's just a. It's well, normally we would limit um, whatever whatever you suggest do you, do you want to limit it to 10 or would you want us to do a little bit higher for you in case you have a little you want to have a additional couple or i mean what if, what, if what you, you plan? if you're fine with i just didn't see myself selling more than 10 but if you want to you know up the up the number that would be fine too i just i'm not going to raise any more than i can sell myself right. um, and i just started uh the northampton farmers market and People are like, Where the, where's the pork? You know, <laughs> I want me some sausage. <laughs> you know, I get comments like that. So, yeah. um, so well, um, I feel like I sh we should give you a little wiggle room. Yeah. Okay. I agree. So, Take I mean, room. do you want to do it for like a dozen, even dozen? Twelve's fine. Yeah. But I, the ZBA, I, I told them I wanted ten, but yeah. you can. Uh, I, Let I, me help you out here a little, Max. I, First thing, tell them. How many acres of land you own? I own 10. Okay, he's got 10 acres of land. I'm, I'm gonna weigh in a little bit here to help the whole board and everybody out. I'm the animal inspector and every year I do an animal count, review barns, and the criteria for all animals is food, water, shelter, uh, and things of that nature, manure management, fencing, and proper care of the pigs, proper feeding, if the, if the pigs were to get fed any garbage, it's mandatory by the state that it be cooked, okay? Yeah. Raw vegetables are okay, but other food is not okay, all right? We've been through this a little bit before. Yes, we have. Uh, in the past. Um, I'm not uncomfortable with Max doing this because we're a right to farm community. There can be no special permits required by Mass General Law for a piggery or a farm, okay? The only thing we can do, or the select board can do, is require the site assignment, which would mean I would go there and inspect it and look for every single thing that Kip said on his list, the wells, right. which I know there aren't any there, and things of that nature, and then we would monitor Max for that. He has more than adequate land to support, well, we issued a license in the past for 300 pigs to 40 acres, so if you want to do the numbers, okay, uh, he he can support 100 pigs without a problem on his property. Well, that's okay. why I wanted, I didn't, the, he, the, he the concern applied is for 10. Getting loose, digging up the neighbors, right. Right. the smell from piling up manure in the front yard, and I have personally been assured by the mushroom lady that she would take anything she could get and bring it indoors so it would not smell, okay, so. Uh, I know Max personally, and I believe that he really will do a great job with this and take care of these animals. And I was able to watch the zoning board. I think your testimony before them, and I, I felt yeah. completely comfortable with everything yeah. he had yeah. he had set forward. Um, and yeah. I'm fine with 12 or 15. I don't. I, it doesn't. I, 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 I think I feel that you know the zoning board could not restrict them to 10. Okay, yep. that's that's a dead issue. The zoning board's a dead issue. They, they have no jurisdiction. Right. Uh, I, I, I I would say put a number, whatever you feel comfortable with, on Max, and if he needs to increase it, I think he can, come he can simply appear before his Absolutely. board and Absolutely. say, I want 12 or 15 or 20. And if he's done a good job and he's taken care of the shelter, the food, the water, uh, and everything else, I don't see a problem. I, I don't see a problem because he's not feeding them garbage and stuff like that, which well, was a current The only thing I'll point out is he cannot slaughter animals on site. He I cannot store uh, any meat on site or anything of that nature. It has to be obviously frozen or stored someplace in a locker. 
and the animals will not be slaughtered on site like has been in the past at other places. Correct, Max? Yeah, to resell, you have to go through USDA yeah. slaughterhouse. Anyways. Right. They're going to go out yeah. alive. Yeah. Okay. They go out yeah. on their feet and they come back in boxes. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I think the only thing I would, <laughs> since we're just settling on like a dozen, this is not a really a concern for manure management, but if you choose at some time to increase the numbers by quite a bit, then I would really uh, hope that you would um, approach NRCS, uh, their Greenfield office, and get a manure management plan that would work with your neighbor. And But, I don't mean, I, at this number, it's not really a problem. Well, I, I just want everybody to know that, yes, we've had a problem in the past. No, it has not been Max. No, I and know. Oh, right. You Absolutely. can't do judgment on somebody Correct. else. Correct. I understand. You can't hold anything against them. I was just concerned if we had a concentration of animals like we did before, that we had a, a, a real manure management. I have plan. an obligation because I'm appointed as the animal sector by the state. I have an obligation to turn him into the state should he violate any of those conditions. I'm, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to put so, it in the record that we should we, have a plan. Can just read these? We well, don't have to read them. I'm just saying, look at those. These are the conditions which the council right. has suggested that you could right. look at and uh, include like as part of it. Okay. Sure. Excuse me, I didn't just ask anybody from the public if they want any input. That's where or I was going. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is a public hearing. So, public if there's hearing. anyone in the public that has anything uh, they'd like to say or any questions they'd like mm -hmm. to ask, you know, now's the time to do it. Well, and come up. Yes, sir. Come on up and sit, have a seat, and introduce mm -hmm. yourself, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, sir. Just you just need to introduce yourself for our um, TV audience. My name is Russ Mazzullo. I own the land above uh, Max uh, Antis. My only concern is uh, if they get loose and they start running around on the mountain, I don't want it to be downgrading my land any more than it is. It's it's a hard market to sell the land. Um, and that's my biggest concern. And what did the planning board agree on? Was it 10 pigs? Or I'm hearing you're up in the ante now on the pigs. Uh, I'd say start out what, what they agreed on. And if he does good in six months or a year, then go from there. That's all I got to say. Max, could you just explain um, what kind of fencing were you going to use, the like the four by four inch stock fencing? Uh, pig panels, They're, they start out like two by six on the bottom foot and then they go up to like a four by six. Um, were you going to put any of it a little bit underground so they can't root under? It's, it's buried in, but I do uh, electric inside that. Just, okay. It just keeps them from digging. I, uh, honestly, Russ, that's really pretty good. I, all I know is, I, I won't mention any names, yeah. <laughs> but for years, the pigs have got loose, the pigs have got loose, and, and it's just like a laughing stock of the town, that's all. And I, I really, you know, I've, I've known Max for a long time, but that's my biggest concern is I don't want him up on the hill. Mm -hmm. I understand. totally understand. I, I really don't. I mean, if he, he got approved for 10, I don't have a problem in a year or six months. If it's doing good, whatever. But let's try him at his number he was approved at. Well, just, just so you understand, he did go to the, the zoning board, but like you said, there is no requirements to do that. And, you know, there's no, as a matter of fact, the state says that they can just, it's a matter of right. I don't want to so, hear that number 300 pigs. No, I've heard I, that I somewhere. Heard <laughs> I, I don't want that, to. That has disappeared. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that, that license is gone. I'm going to limit myself to what I can sell as meat to other people. Well, I don't have an issue if you want to start out with a number and then, yep. like I say, six months or something, but I don't want to see a pig on my property up there, okay? You know yeah. what I mean? I, I don't want to see Russ, I, I, I can honestly say it's a different situation. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I, I'm sure he'll stick with his word. I, I've known him, but I'm just going to mm -hmm. let you know how I feel because I don't want to come in and find out he's got a, more pigs up there than he knows what they're doing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is there the anyone else? The only reason I suggested the 12 is okay. because yep. I was sure. worried on, that you might have a... Hey. Hello, I'm Sally Jones, and I'm on Adams Court, which kind of backs up to... Excuse me, Sally, would you speak into the microphone yeah. so the folks at home could hear you? That um, I'm on Adams Court, and it backs up to Stillwater. 
and yeah. not very far from the original piggery. Okay. Um, and it, you may not even be able to answer my question is, where is the mushroom lady? In the barn, the long uh, horse, used oh, to be okay. horse farm. Uh -huh. barn. Yeah, yeah. And do you know where she's going to dump the manure? Or you're going to dump the manure? She has this sawdust material that she mixes with the manure. And she's been bagging it and selling it. So. Okay. And it's, it's not near the street? Um, you don't know, which it could well, very well be. I dump it, you know, she like 100 yards back yeah. from this road. But the, it's yes. not manure manure That's that I dump there. Yeah. It's a mixture of wood chips and manure. Yes. Yeah. So it's not very, the, the, it's maybe 10% manure and 90% wood chips, because I use it as bedding with the cows. but. Um, I don't anticipate a lot of manure ending, you know, being concentrated because they'll be in the pasture anyways. Max, she's she's doing this already, right, with other... Right. She's doing manure correct. process for mushrooms already. Yes, correct. correct. Okay. Yes. This is just supplementing what she's doing. Right. With she's some, just looking for another source. Right. Gotcha. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? No? Okay, I guess that's good. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Max? No, I, I hope I do have to come back and ask for more, but I don't, um, I, like I said, I just, I don't want to raise and sell live animals. I want to, yep. you know, only gr raise as many as I can sell as a finished product. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I'm sure, unsure, do we vote? on this uh, site ass assessment or do we just well um we'll, we'll dick why don't you explain the process because he doesn't have the pigs yet so well, please tell him what you told it's me a earlier. little bit of a catch-22 okay i can't do my review of the site for adequate food water shelter fencing etc cetera, etc cetera, and how he's keeping the pigs okay so you're gonna you you really have to allow him to have these pigs and then when he gets them I go there, review the site, tell him that he's done everything correct or he's got to correct one or two items, that he needs more watering troughs, for example, or he needs a little more fencing, and we discuss that and we, come, and we do the inspection. Then I report back to you that he's passed everything, he's taken care of everything like he said he was, and he can continue on. It becomes a tiny risk for you, Max, that you can get these 10 pigs and you bring them in there, and then you, you call me up and tell me you got them. Then I go over and do the inspection. And if there's any corrections you need to be made, you just do them. And that's it. Uh, it's pretty cut and dried by state regulations of you mm -hmm. need this, 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 and this in order to comply. And I, Max is already aware of it. He's already yep. mentioned he knew about the block fencing, the electric fence on the bottom. Uh, he'll have an adequate water supply. Um, he understands you can't slaughter anything on site or kill anything on site. Uh, I, I'm sure Max understands from his cow raising days that if an animal is deceased, that he has to dispose of it in a proper manner. Uh, that That's a whole different area. but. So, so what is the process? Do they issue the site assignment now, yep, or yeah. you have to do your inspection yeah, first? You issue the site assignment to them now, yep. and, if I, yeah, and right. if I come yeah. back in here and tell you that he doesn't pass, and he won't pass, or he's uncooperative, then you have to revoke his site assignment. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Great. Okay. okay. All right. So I guess, yes, sir. Then he's got to take them to auction and get rid of them. Not, right? not necessarily. No, I would say no because Doesn't we have to have a little faith in the people we're dealing with. We have to do that a little bit. I mean, I know everybody's concerned about previous history, and I cannot talk about that because that's in process. Uh, so I have faith in Max. I think 
and I think Max would probably give you his word right now that if he doesn't pass, he can't come up to snuff, that he would get rid of him. I've known him all his life. Max? You afraid, you're afraid that I'm going to knock you over with this? And you're not going to cooperate? You, you can be pretty tough. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's his own risk. Okay. All right. I, at this time, I'll close the public hearing at 847. Um, I make a motion that we um, approve the site assignment for 12 pigs for Max at 67 Stillwater Road, South Deerfield. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Great. All right, then. I guess you're all set for now. Thank you. Right. Uh, is there paperwork or? I, I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch. Well, okay. I think. Good. All right. There's no paperwork from us. So you're not friend. adding any of these additional conditions? He's, he's going to meet all of them. Yeah. Okay. Dick's going to. He, he described the fencing. Yep. That is the main concern for Russ. Okay. And um, he's got plenty of um, land. It's a manure, I, for this few, a number of pigs, there's, I would not um, anticipate a manure management plan at all from NRCS. Mm -hmm. Just like I said, I would really appreciate you coming back should you increase your numbers and we can talk I about what kind of numbers we need for a uh, you know, manure management plan or a formal one. But well, I, I would say there's plenty of acreage for this kind of animals. I think, I think uh, mainly uh, council was concerned that, again, we're limiting the number of pigs on site, um, sanitary controls, which you're going to look at. Um, you know, there's no well heads near, near the thing. Um, and no and, streams. And, that and was water a water treatment. That's a big setback thing. requirements of the pens and shelter. You've obviously got 10 acres of land there. Um, uh, limitation of butchering on site, which you've mentioned, and storm runoff, stormwater runoff treatment, um, and, and preparation of feed, garbage, or grain. So obviously you talked about cooking. I, I probably should have bought, brought a form that I have to fill out for the state every year. I probably should have brought an old one so you could have read that. Yep. Which you, it's for all animals, and you check off the particular animal, how many there are, the conditions, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll just finish the list. We've got fencing, which you have, shelter, which you've, you've man mentioned, prohibitions on property, including storage of trash or garbage or other refuse, abandoned motor vehicles, um, compliance of, um, of other local, local and state rules and regulations, which you've hit on already, and review and or nuisance cri uh, reissuance criteria. So I think you were going to say you were going to inspect it yep. and then look at that, and then uh, that's it. They emphasize is, is that's a state an, requirement. To right. Do right. The is this an open ended and the only thing that would change were he to come in for any change in the number, I suppose, or if there were complaints, they could re revoke well, it? No, this is there's no, it's this. not, doesn't have a termination date. No. no. The only reason he would have to come back to this board was for complaints, failure to comply. If I went there and there was 25 or 30 pigs and there was supposed to be 10. If you go there and there's 11 or 12, that's not unreasonable because it that's could be in transition. Okay, so you have 12. to be, you have to use common sense about that. Yeah. That doesn't mean ah, I got you because he had 11 pigs that particular day. Mm -hmm. If he had some pigs and they had piglets, he, now, he might not ha now he might have 15. That's just temporary and that's, that's absolutely an acceptable farming practice. Yeah. So. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Max. Right. Okay, moving on. Um, you already gave us the update for the special town meeting. I did, but and I thought of something else that I wanted okay. to mention, if that's okay. Um, um, oh, just related to last meeting and a discussion about whether or not to adopt general bylaws for marijuana and getting pushback from one of the attorneys working with the company wanting to have a business here in town, uh, saying, why do you want to do that? And I asked you to think about that, because we don't have to do that. And council said it just gives you more control at the select board level. Um, you're also the Board of Health. I do recommend that you have regulations. I think I send out a sample regulations. I'm mm -hmm. not certain. 
um, but I have some, and but I, I would like the board to decide what you want to do because if you want general bylaws in addition to the zoning for marijuana establishments, that needs to be on a special town meeting warrant as well. Um, I, Michelle worked uh, for quite a few years and 30 plus years in tobacco control in a lot of different locations. And uh, what she's told me is that a lot of the consumption of marijuana through smoking follows the same state guidelines as tobacco regulations. So I, a question you could ask our council, is the marijuana in, uh, consumption enforceable along with our uh, traditional tobacco regulations, or do we have to change a couple of words to include the marijuana? Going to the meetings, um, if you, you there's no smoking allowed in public spaces. Correct. There is no smoking allowed of marijuana either. Right, and that's what I was. I've yeah. been led to believe, but I didn't know if. No, well, I, 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 I guess it's worth checking out. But my every meeting I've been to, they've explained that it has been mm -hmm. assumed. Right, smoking is smoking. Well, smoking is smoking. there is that meeting next Thursday night, um, earlier in the day earlier in the evening. I didn't get the notice. Can you, you got the notice. Yes, I haven't seen it. Well, see. From FERCOG, they're having Cannabis Control Commission members out. Well, maybe we could go to that. I, I'm um, making a list. <laughs> so I'll read that. Uh, good afternoon, Boards of Health. We are pleased to announce that the Cannabis Control Commission is coming out to the Franklin County, coming out to Franklin County again next week to give an update for local officials on their final regulations the timeline for licensure and what they will be doing next. If flyers attached, uh, please note it's at five o'clock, um, five to six thirty. Um, let's see. I think that's it. As it related to that, there's also a, another public health thing going on. Yeah. on I think it would be good to go. I'm hoping to go. Hopefully, we're ready for your meeting. Um, yep. By the way, I did get a text from. Kevin saying he and Dave Prickett can be here. Oh, good. On that on Thursday the, on evening. On that Thursday. On Thursday. Yeah, yeah. The seven. At 7 o'clock. Right. I had to. Yep. Okay. So I would like to go for two reasons. One is there are all kinds of questions. Um, we'd like answers, and we'd like them to know what the issues are. And I think it's important that they know, and the public knows, that their work has been all on us to roll out, mm -hmm. to get right. And it's, right. it's been stressful for many communities to deal with their, this and the timeline. Well, I don't like the, I think it's important to let them know that for, they cannot keep changing the rules. You know, once they say something, they, mm -hmm. then you should move on. You can't, I mean, because we adjust to what they say is the rule, and then they update the next, the rule. Right. Well, no hopefully updates. these are final. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but they're interpret they're, there's room for interpretation. That's know, where problems come in. So mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to keep track of the kinds of issues and questions that come up. So I, again, I didn't know about this. I just heard it from yep. well, Trevor. Are, you, are so, you going to that, Trevor? I, I will try. I will oh, try okay. to do that. Well, if, if either, I w I'm not going to be able to go, okay, but if either one of you go. Let me uh, know. You know, yeah. this whole thing, and, and I, maybe I wasn't making myself clear, because a lot of the regulations, not only from the state, from the town, talk about tobacco use. And that was because there was a lot of chewing tobacco right. type things. Uh -huh. uh, so I don't know if the, the use of marijuana, if it falls into both things where you could have an argument. Are you e eating it? Is that a use? Or are you uh -huh. smoking it? Is that a use? You know? I don't so. think, I don't know if you're asking this, but I don't think the tobacco regulations that we have locally, for instance, transfer onto marijuana. I think we'd have they to don't. affirmatively adopt regulations having to do with marijuana specifically it's a different product even though it gets it, it may be taken in similar forms or mm -hmm. smoked or whatever so. the um, I know that um, you know Cheryl Sabaro yeah. and she does a lot of work with uh, the tobacco industry, and she's told us told me or through Michelle that smoking of marijuana is still prohibited in public places right. yes. because it's a smoking thing, right but you know. the chewing part I the mean chewing, you know, with, yeah. the edibles and yeah that doesn't translate in okay. our bylaws okay. but I you know so um, back to my question about whether you'd like to look at uh, adopting a general bylaw um, or have you seen any templates of I have I I've shared know. with you what yeah. council gave us yeah. it was basically um, it's actually in the regulations um, it's it's a bylaw to allow you to 
have regulations. And um, I'm not aware, and I did put a question out to my colleagues on and the small town administrators, and then none of them said they were doing this, but they are doing Board of Health regulations. I was just going to say, I don't, I don't really feel like we need a general, you know, regular bylaw. But we need Board of Health regulations because we, we're we not being forced to have a social, cons those are on hold, those mm -hmm. social consumptions places. But those are the ones that we're, we're all concerned mm -hmm. about. And so that we should have specific Board of Health um, regs mm -hmm. on that. Is that something you or any one of you would like to, I can give samples to and you can look at it and bring it back to the I, board? I don't mind then. doing that because I, I feel very strongly we need um, that sounds great. Some, some Board of Health regs. I don't think we need gen general right. regulations. Because board I, of Health, definitely. Because the planning board is going to be reviewing site plan review and all that kind of stuff anyway. So it's like regulation on top of regulations. That's not necessary. That's what the feedback was from that. Yeah. yeah. But Still. Board of Health regulations is totally different. You have sanitary conditions and right. inspections that we should be doing. and and the, But that hasn't been promulgated across the state yet. So... Oh, what the I have some. Yes, I, they've been proposed, but nobody's really. Um, uh, well, Northampton actually, I have theirs because they already yeah. had a hearing That's on true, it. That's true, Meredith. And I did talk to Meredith. It. On yeah, that. I've had I have Northamptons, yeah. so and um, so I can get those two to you. Sounds good. But we'll bring that forward, and if you are want to vote on that, I will. T I had that protocol, and I sent it out to all of you and uh, well i'm going to see sorry. meredith tomorrow and so if, i'll get a copy of that from you and and um, okay go over um, it with her well what i let me I'll, what i'm talking about now is the general bylaws if you decide if you are in agreement that you don't wish to go down that path i'd like you to vote that and i will let the, all the parties that i let know what our process is mm -hmm. i sent out that protocol to mm -hmm. all to all of you and i i bc to seed it to the numerous entities that have contacted me interested in what we're doing and how to apply to the town to go forward with a, an establishment. Um, I will let them know that, we're, that the board is choosing not to go forward with general bylaws if that's what you I don't want know. to I, decide tonight. I, I guess I haven't, put a, I haven't put enough thought into it because I, I guess I'm naive to, you know, what problems could come up, you know. Well, I, I mean, that's why the I mean, we ha we voted as a town to have the planning board do the review, so having us have a separate review doesn't seem to be necessary. Right. Since we'd be doing the... I'm not pushing you to make a decision right now. Mm. I'm saying you. I would like I you guess. to make it a more formal one so I then would, you know, that changes well, the, the process is that we're I, using. I, I make a motion that we decide not to have general bylaws for um, review. I would Just second that. All right. Any further discussion? Uh, my only thing is that I, the, the planning board, work, the work they did, I don't want to kind of minimize it, but they really didn't create them. The, the attorney did it for us, for the planning board. Uh, and that was more of where they could be, not so much of a, a use thing. I, 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 I have no problem with that. So okay. all those in favor? Aye. 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 And I, I do think... Um, um, you through the board of health regs can address some of the right. concerns so. you would. Sure. Yep. Um, that's I, I think that's where the. I, I mean, I'll I'll talk to it, I'll get a copy of of them from you, hard copy, and when I see Meredith tomorrow, I'll I'll ask her what she's running into for issues. Okay. okay. Or if she's had any pushback. Uh, the, the wastewater treatment plant, um, assessment project with uh, Mr. Oh. Prickett. We're going to do that. Thursday, uh, Thursday, June 7th at 7 o'clock. Uh, Bruce, if you wanted to notify some of the other members of the sewer study committee that we're going to do that, they're more than welcome. Next Thursday, Next Thursday at 7 o'clock. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. Select board comments. Got a couple Ten. things, but okay. I'll well, just get a couple of right. announcements, or sure. do you want to do something else? Oh, first? well, no, oh, no, I just wanted to say we have 16 days before we have to have a float for yeah, exactly. Um, um, the Sunderland Parade. So, Kip, <laughs> I you got a tractor. Um, <laughs> I have a tractor. I, I, Any, I, I are don't use you your hay wagon full. I don't have uh, I don't have any any idea at this time, you know. 
Oh, we have ideas. Do you have... Um, well, we solicited some ideas. We just need a vehicle and a wagon. I yep. think that would probably be the best. Reba Pichette, um, I'll ask Reba Pichette, since she did the one in Conway, um, we could, she, I, I think she would do help us. And we had talked about the Blue Bridge. Yep, church on one side, Sugarloaf on the other. And then have um, an ambulance and mm -hmm. Sugarloaf on one side and have, um, I don't know, something just need to a bunch relate of to history. We'll have to go through the history. Figure it out. Hmm. Some kind of historical Not relationship too elaborate, we had. We have 16 days, so. Yeah. Basically, the Connecticut River and the Blue Bridge will take up a lot. If, if a Kips, picture of the uh, uh, South County MS patch. There you go. <laughs> yes. Um, do you, um, so do you think your wagon would be full of hay at the time, or should we plan well, on a different wagon? Or how yeah, do you, why don't you see if you can get another one? Because yeah. do, does your right now their son-in-law have a wagon? See, maybe yeah, that might doing be hay full. Too, but I maybe, know. Uh, maybe we can figure out something. A flatbed or something like that. Yeah, something. Okay. Anybody have a flatbed or a hay wagon that wants to donate That's and get involved to celebrate your neighbor? Yeah. Um, we would love the help. Um, I think we should save one of those cruisers to keep disposing of, and then you've got something for every parade that comes up. <laughs> <laughs> True. We cut the top you off. Tow the, exactly. so, so you have a registered vehicle that will pull something, though, right? Well, he's, he may not well, be registered. Uh, well, yeah, uh, yes and no. I do have registered vehicles that can pull something, but my tractor is not registered. Right. Oh, well, we need, we'll have to have something registered to pull the... I mean, you have to get the float down to the Sunderland and right. be on the street. True. It's well, if I great. can help you out, if, just let me know <laughs> if okay. when you come up with an idea like that. <laughs> um, all right, so Trevor, you, you filled us in on the hiring of the yes. hiring process for the uh, South County Senior Center. I did. And Carolyn, do you want to talk about the tabletop exercise at the South Deerfield Fire Station coming up? Or? Um, oh, well, I did last week. Not yeah, a lot has it. changed since last meeting, so, other okay. than that Good. it might, um, <laughs> it seems like there's a great participation so far, so we might be moving it to GCC. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, not much has happened since we voted the money okay. two weeks ago. Um, the only thing that I want to add is that um, I'm, I'm not going to be able to continue on the Frontier Committee, and I don't know if you want to call it a building committee or a capital improvement committee or, or whatever it is. Um, I, I've spoken with the uh, selectmen from Conway and Waitley and myself, and we're all on the same page that we feel that these improvements are, are kind of expensive, but through all the meetings that I've been through, it, the discussion has never been how to alter it or other choices, it's always been just this is what it is, how are we going to get the money? And it's just been really disheartening and I spend a lot of time just listening to the same old thing. You know, we've, we've had people, uh, very nice people, talented people come from the state or retired state people explaining how, you know, we can borrow money in different avenues, but it's always been the same thing. You know, it's just this is what we want, how are we going to get the money? You know, um, I don't have... I, I just I can't I do I, I do nothing so you know and that's I feel very you know frustrated at, at the process um, so I, I don't know if you have more patience than I am if you wanted to step in and do that or <laughs> time is the hard part but uh, yeah. I'll see what I can do on the on the peripheral yeah but, you know, it's um, well I kind of hate to have you give up though Kip because that's the whole point of participation is you I mean you you don't throw your hands up. You have to just keep hanging in there. <laughs> I, well, I, what, it, what happens is I'm in a room with 12 people, and I feel like I'm always a bad guy, and I question, why is it this much money? And everybody else throws their hands up. Oh, we've talked about this over and over. This is something that's really needed. It's at, it's at the end of its useful life. Well, 20, just because something's 20 years old, doesn't mean that you need to throw it away. Oh, you know, and it's the same old thing. Well, how are we going to get this money? And they talk over me, and it's like, and I keep and I keep beating but, the same but drum. But you said you you spoke to the person from Conway and the person from Whateley, right? They feel and the exact same way I do. Then the three of you decide that this is. I mean, the problem is, Kip, is you have some expertise, and it's important that you, the three of you, sit there and say that 
there, there are other considerations or other ways that we can deal with this. And, and, and we do, and it, we all feel very frustrated. And, it, and just to try to make it as simple as possible, it's, it was the exact same way as the $35,000 lawnmower. You know, I tried to state the obvious, and even the town overwhelmingly voted to buy, spend the money on it. And it, so I'm not a troublemaker, and if that's what the will of the people is, that's fine. And I feel that same things going on with this. It's, it's going to come down to we want A, B, C, and D. And you know, I can say, well, it, I don't think that it's, uh, it's prudent to spend this kind of money on something that doesn't really need to be replaced. And the people are going to have a choice, and they're going to vote to buy it. And, you know, it is frustrating for me, Carol. It's so frustrating for me. Because to me, it's black and white. But, you know, I'm, I'm only... I'm only trying to do the best that I can, and uh, I can't seem to steer this ship in a different direction, if you know what I'm trying to say. I do. You know, it's, it is frustrating for me, but, uh, you know, I can't, I'm not the kind of person to stand up, yell, and scream and stuff. I, I give them my opinion, and, and it's not just my opinion. I will try to rationalize and say, well, look, at this is, it. This is show me some damage or why this needs to be replaced. And it's, all I get is these, to me, unacceptable answers. Well, it's at its end of its useful life. <laughs> I, you know, if it still works, if it still works, it's uh-huh. working. You know, but uh, uh-huh. that's it, it is, it's it's frustrating for me. So, and I'm not making a difference. You know, and when I've been to maybe seven of the ten meetings, and I, I can't. What was, what was that guy's name from? The, he used to work for the department. Sure, John Barcarian? John Barcarian, yeah. Real nice guy, you know. And I think I brought what he had, I, I brought to this board several months yeah, ago. Yeah, the financing plan. The financing plan. That's all he like. does. He's not That's an right. engineer. He's no, not, no, right. right. Yeah, and I thought they did go out to, <clears throat> excuse me, were seeking an engineer or a estimator or somebody professional to actually evaluate and look at the items that they've identified they and did, really they narrow did, in on the on the cost and the whether to or not. They did on <clears throat> uh, the roof issue, which I pointed out was more of a condensation issue. So they did hire uh, an engineer from the Amherst area, and he came in and did an assessment and showed them or, or detailed how they go about you know you know stopping Insulated. this uh, ins- you know the the condensation problem through proper insulation and stuff. And it, it did, the project grew because they were talking about changing out lighting and ceilings and stuff like that. Right. And, and that's, that's all okay. Um, so that aspect they did. But as far as they're still talking about replacing the majority of that roof, I don't know why. Um, they're talking about replacing, you know, furniture, gold posts, the track, um, a whole list of things. I have two more things that have come to mind. Okay. The, well, the, this, these are the fun things that everybody's waiting yes. for. All right. I think my the recreational are department is having a foam fest fun day, sponsored by the Deerfield Recreational Department. Inflatables too. Uh, June 9th, one to three p.m. Pre-K through uh, sixth grade, Memorial Field, and it is free for your kids. So rock out in the foam pit, jump in the bouncy house, swish down the slide, challenge yourself on the obstacle course. There are food and drinks available, so it looks wicked fun. So get your kiddos out there. Um, And then Deerfield Recreation's Concert on the Commons is back for the summer. Um, So July 6th, we've got Wildcat O'Haran. July 20th, Whiskey, Wine, and Coke. And I assume that's Coca-Cola. And (laughs) I assume that's a band. (laughs) Uh, So July 27th is Fortified Blues Band. Uh, These are some uh, from 6.30 to 8 p.m. through the month of July. Um, South Deerfield Town Common. Rain site would be the Deerfield Town Hall here. And um, so it looks really fun. So I hope everybody gets out and does that. Is this the sure. same as the concerts that the Julie? No, uh, and I was looking for that link. I know Julie mentioned, I believe it's so June. It starts concerts. in June. They do Mondays, uh, music, music Mondays uh, at the uh, Tilton Library. And if Julie is out there, get me some information for next meeting. Uh, but I, I think I looked on the site. I didn't see it right off the bat. But I know Mondays... Site. I think it's starting the beginning of June or the second week in June, um, but we'll try to get more info for you. Trevor, you just gave me a great idea for our float. Um, we could, if we could find a wagon, 
we could just get a bounce house and put it on the wagon and just have a banner say Deerfield's a fun place <laughs> and get kids that's local brilliant. kids to jump in the bounce that's house. That's brilliant. That is a really good idea. And I'm with you. All you do is put it on the wagon and blow it up. I've got a generator. Well, my my a view is to get a flatbed and a band and just because that's what I saw down in Gloucester. They had just towed a big truck. Yeah. With a band on the back, and they played well, music, and it was awesome. That, I don't know anybody that plays. I, uh, I know somebody who plays. <laughs> yes, fiddle music. Fiddle music. Yeah. Do a little. So between those two ideas, we need a truck and a flatbed. Anybody have a truck and a flatbed? Call me, <laughs> please. That's it. I'm done. Well, I, I, I have a, I have both of those, but I think, I think a dump truck with a construction trailer probably wouldn't be as nice as a wagon behind a tractor. But I don't know. Uh, How would you get worst the comes the worst. Can you try it? You, it would be okay. Yeah, you can okay. go. The law says six mile radius, so that's a cool way of putting it. Because you put a pin in my farm and you put a string on a six mile and go anywhere else. So I can, you I can, can drive. Over to I yeah. can drive my tractor to Montague. Oh, no so oh, you could drive it then down that Sundorn. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. thinking. I was thinking you would. No, no he's got a farm plate. Okay. Right? No, you don't farm plate. You don't need to have oh, okay. one. Okay. Six okay. miles from your farm. Let's All right. do it, Kip. So All right. We've we'll got to find a flatbed, though. We've got to get a bounce house. I can get or, a bounce house. Or musicians, we either one. I just, we'll I just thought a bounce house, because it doesn't take a lot. You just set it on the thing and blow it up. You know, i got a generator. So it comes you're going to you're gonna jump around inside. I'll jump around inside. <laughs> wow, well, I'm sure we could find we get some kids. I know some kids. I know some kids. It's my candidate. <laughs> <laughs> the bouncing bylaw committee. <laughs> And Wendy, you could write on the back of the no, float. No. Listen, and this is even better. We'll have the generator on the back of it, and you could stick big bubbles and just put them near the exhaust, and the exhaust will blow bubbles off. I the definitely back. want to do that. <laughs> Let's I'm do it. Totally that would be fun. Focus. All right, we're going to make something <laughs> happen with your, all of your help. I want to have to have something so. in 16 days. 16 I don't days, really care at fellas. This point. Just ladies, gonna make it we need look some help. Like well, we're someone has to take the lead and set a date and get it. Yes. Do it. I'll post something on. Facebook I'll wear a clown uniform somewhere. if the police department will lend me their motorcycle. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else? Or yeah, or anything else? I just have two more meeting. things, and I completely oh, okay. forgot what they you know, were. You know, the only thing is, um, I just wanted to bring up that September 5th, you have your upcoming regular meetings. I realize it's way off in September, but um, I think, Trevor, we were, you, were, you had a potential conflict for that day. The 5th? Yeah. Let me check. You're really planning into... Advanced. Well, no, I just I, uh, remember last time we didn't check, and then Tr Trevor had a meeting conflict. I have select board meeting listed right now. So you don't have a school committee? Probably. All right. But so, I'll juggle that. Okay. I'll, I'll find out. I'll get, I'll get the schedule. Um, actually, bear with me. Oh, I do know what I wanted to say. Um, Diane has been working on the Complete Streets uh, project. And it kind of brings together various things, our South Deerfield, our South Deerfield Center work that Trevor and I were starting to do, the Town Commons group, which is meeting again tomorrow. And we're getting closer to um, working on a policy. Diane has met with Kevin. Um, some, of the some of the initiatives under and commitments that you make under the Complete Streets um, program are um, sometimes meet with resistance from traditional public works. And so she's meeting with Kevin and sort of talking through those issues. And we, she hopes to have, we'll have a policy, a revised policy in front of you soon. Okay. Um, we have been, uh, the document that you, or the vote you took, I don't know if it was your last meeting in the meeting before, I think it was the last meeting, um, did get forwarded. We were accepted as a tier two, you know, I keep saying, what does that mean? <laughs> At any rate, we are moving along in the process, which is good. And hopefully all of this will come together. We'll bring back people who are excited about, involved with the previous Complete Streets project, town commons people, the business folks that we've met with um, who were very interested in South Deerfield Center, and then all kinds of other folks, whoever's interested in seeing us moving forward um, in this part of town um, to address sidewalks, streets, parking, beautification, uh, other improvements, et cetera. So that's in the works, and I hope we'll bring it all together and move on that this year. I'm really that excited was one about thing. That. That's really. <laughs> I great. can't remember the other though. 
I have a message that Colcott has donated their flatbed in the past for parades. So maybe we, if anyone knows, we could reach out. Okay. See if they might might be willing. Kip, do you see them at all? Uh, I don't usually. But maybe I could reach make out. Make a to call anybody. somehow. Or if anybody else knows anybody yeah. else with a flatbed. Here does the highway, does the highway garage have one? They might have one. For some Who's reason, that? I thought they had a trailer to move stuff around. highway department? Yeah. Oh, well, let's check with Kevin. Hmm. Right. That would be actually really good. Would you check with Henry for... Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. And, Thanks. And uh, Sharon said she would check with him, too. Okay, so, good. Um, I also just wanted to publicly thank... Um, Sue Corey and um, Meg at, at the Meg Ryan at the um, Senior Center. They have been really, really without a director. They have been working extremely hard and doing a great job oh, and uh, taking care of our seniors. And um, I, I know so, Sue's so going to want a little bit of a rest is after <laughs> it's over. But. Is there a bit, uh, cookout? Is it I was just going to say yes. eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock on June six is the senior picnic out here. Yep. And. Um, and again, I just want to say I agree with Trevor. It's wonderful. Sue, Sue Corey and, and Meg both have done a huge amount They've of work. They've stepped up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and make job. sure that um, the seniors' needs are being addressed. I really Thanks. appreciate it. Good. And congratulations Good. on the opening of the South County yes. EMS building. Oh my gosh, I yes. unfortunately oh, I couldn't be oh, there, I've but I've been hearing more and more positive things about it. And it was lovely. It was, it was a lovely day. It was really good. Yep. And um, um, actually, I want to make sure that we send a formal thank you letter from us um, to the Beat family for yes. the land donation and to Deerfield Academy for the building donation. There, and there was. Uh, there were people I that I, I neglected uh, I don't know about the land, so to I thank know what that is. during that meeting that I would just take this min minute to say, um, you know, the Gilmore family um, it was very instrumental in, in, in our early EMS. This is all before my time, but just as I'm learning how instrumental that Matt family Rousseau, was, make sure that Mark, and, um, Mark and his father, and, yep. um, and then all the EMTs, you know, just talking with... Um, um, with Kathy Belanger, uh, you know, I didn't realize she had been an EMT for years, and she still responds to this too. day if there's yeah. an issue up yep. at that end of town. And yep. those people who laid the groundwork, um, and then the people way before my time that came together to to pull this this together, Wendy's work, you know, years ago, and all all of that to mm -hmm. to pull that together and to have a really viable and an amazing service right now. And now they're finally in a home of their own. Uh, to grow and build on it, I just think it's amazing, and oh, I didn't want to. And then Mark, Mark Russo, Matt Russo, Matt. Matt Russo who has yeah. done um, so much, you know, before my time there, and still, it's very, you know, he was there the other day, and just I neglected to thank all of them at that time. You get in the minute and you forget it all, but um, mm. so just want to thank them publicly for all they've done. I don't think that they're actually using the building yet, though. And I was Not yet. Not I wonder yet. why. I, they're waiting for the medical. Uh, they, have to have they, get, uh, they have to have the certification from the state. Certification and then the phones to switch over, which should be in the week or so. You would think thought. that there's somebody from the state you could call and say, hey, look at you. Know, they, if they're close. Yeah. yeah. It's Zach's on top of it. Boy, oh, does, yeah. he, Boy does he want to be in there. He's harassing. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. He's harassing yeah. them. Yeah. It's, just, it's just you have to have the... It, the it's the medical moving, thing and the yeah, security in that. You have the drugs being moved over to the new location. It has to be certified. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You have to have a lockable space. I mean, which is a problem, it now already, but they but have to yep. have okay. it certified. So anybody want to go home yet? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Kip, for okay. very efficient first meeting. Oh, oh, we Sorry. have public comment. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. What's that? We could talk about foam a little bit more, foam days. <laughs> a brief comment. Anna Lee Wolf Cole for Mountain Road. Um, and this is a comment in regards to um, appointments to town committees. I have understood that some committees have some vacancies that will be open for appointment in the month of June. Yes. Um, I have been trying to find out more about the process and the positions and have been met with a lot of um, frustration. <clears throat> Nothing is on the um, town website. 
Nothing is on the bulletin board out here. I came in and spoke with someone here in the town offices and didn't really get a lot of clarity then. Um, I think we as a town are trying to um, no longer have the perception that we are a town that is run by well-established insiders. And certainly a way to get out of that perception is to have more people apply for and be part of the town committees. So I hope this is something that the Board of Selectmen can take a lead on and certainly not make any appointments until the process is more clearly understood. I've, um, start, I've just taken the liberty of making a little grid that could be the starting point with what's the committee, what's the position, the term, when do people meet, well, I, I, we, we usually what we do, and, I, and Carolyn would know better than this, was anybody that's interested in being on a board could just write a letter of intention on what board that they would like to be on. And uh, you know we would review those um, along with the people who are on the board. And well, it's not just the Board of Selectmen who is the moderator also makes moderator appointments. Moderator makes to, some appointments. Yeah. I think to, to your point is there should be a spot that has all that data and we used to have Doug had developed a website and I don't know if that lapsed at some point but there was a service where you could go to and it was linked on our home page where it listed all the boards and what was vacant and when the terms were up and who was in it and I don't know where that process went but I know he spent some time getting that together well I, I did speak to Diana about this a few maybe a month or so ago and she was going to work on um, making sure that on all the on the website on every board it has the person's name and when their term expires and list if there was a vacancy that'd be great uh, so it's multiple issues here yeah. number one is we're going to bring you appointments for your next meeting not the next one well mm -hmm. maybe the next one next week um the straightforward ones police department um SCEM, uh, you know, yeah. EMTs, um, and I uh, forget another one. That isn't a general public kind of thing, but appointments that they do make. And in order to have accurate information, and it, thank you <laughs> right. for asking this question, mm -hmm. we uh, need to um, review, and we seem to not always have corrections we need to make because it isn't accurate. So we're trying to review and assess who, which committees and going back to the bylaws to make sure that we have the right number, mm -hmm. that they're coincident with them, that we don't have more people appointed than actually the bylaw says are supposed to be on that committee, um, or the statute if it's a committee set up by state law. So we're, I'm right now trying to get that accurate, and then we can, I want to see what you're talking about. I, will, I don't I'll know about that, that web, web page. That. Um, and then I think you can go on the website and you can look at all the different boards and committees, but what may not be there for all of them or many of them is these bigger questions. What do they do? Mm -hmm. Who appoints? When do they meet? And, you know, those kinds of general questions. Um, and then, you know, most lay people, I think, who aren't already involved or deeply involved in government don't know what committee they might be interested in mm -hmm. serving on. Yeah, um, so we, we need to work on that, so and I want that to get done. It's a priority. And so we'll, thank you for raising yeah. that issue. I yep. have mm -hmm. that down here. I know James mentioned it um, as well. And um, I thought you were going to say not just the insiders, but mm -hmm. the same people. <laughs> That's you know, right, and I'm sure people. all of the same people would like to have more people. Yes. <laughs> they would. That share the lot, burden. Lot that is do what's work. said. Oh, that is true. <laughs> So Bruce. we're working on it. I think we've made great strides with the website. I hope other people perceive that. Uh, to me, it's much more useful. Always more work to do. So come to the yours is uh, all these committees are listed on the website, and when they have meetings on the upcoming events, you can go down the calendar. Some of them are within a couple of months. And I know from personal experience, not the committees I'm on right now, but in the past, um, I felt a lot more comfortable going to some of these meetings and find out what they are, which you read on the paper and what really happens in the meetings is not the same. If you have one or two meetings, uh, committees that you're interested in, even if they don't have an opening at this point, kind of get a taste of what the town politics is like, uh, and it also you might decide, well, that's not a committee I want to be part of, too. So there is, you don't have to wait to be appointed. These are all posted, 
and I think any any committee that's out here would welcome to see some public uh, show up once in a while because we kind of sit there looking at each other because of exactly what you're mm -hmm. saying because people are a little bit weary about coming in but the, the, the best experience you're going to get is coming into some of these committee meetings and, and seeing what they do. There really is nothing yet that I know of that is printed matter that says that gives you a detailed uh, responsibility list. There's general duties and so forth and the bylaws and so forth, but that's just a general policy. You get sit down and watch the committee members and so forth. Some of the meetings there end up being nothing, but if you go to two or three, you should be able to get a feel of what they're like. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm glad you came forward and I hope more people do come yeah. forward to Well, involved. really, thank you for and, coming. And Emily, yes. um, the town report has has um, um, that would be a good place to look to. You, yeah. you you can they have like a little summary of what activity they did for the year right and then list yeah. the people on it and usually their term so no, um, not consistent with the term but i think yes because yeah. i've looked there so, also so then you could see mm -hmm. you know you could read the general well this is what we did mm -hmm. for the year and then and then find out who what um committee members mm -hmm. are i mean it won't give you whether it's a, a selectman's appointee or a moderator appointee, but it will give oh. you some ability as to um, whose term is up, and there the, then you could find out f whether it's a moderator or our appointment. Which is on the website, on the bylaws. Oh, does it? Okay. It does yes, say it. It, it does say. Well, it actually it does say. Oh, it does. In the book, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Not all of them. Just and right. it's also at the town meeting. We do that at the beginning, the moderator. Right, you know, for some of them. Some of them. Right, some moderators. of them, yeah. So it's, again, putting together the patchwork quilt. But I know, you're yeah. looking for a one-stop shop here. and But that's very useful to, to, to for all the reasons. All right, well, and I'll get you but, some more info on what done. Emily, thank happened. you for your and interest. All these are up on I, the I think it is very important that people, people who yeah. participate. Thank you so much. Listening sure. can also know, especially that they're welcome to come to the committee meetings of and course, sure. oh yeah they're all public Absolutely. meetings mm -hmm. and you know many a times we'd, we'd love to see people there yep, yep. pretty good Thank I think you. it's it's always nice to hear comments because yeah. you know a lot of times you just there's no one here and you're just talking right. <laughs> if the tree so falls it, in the forest it, right, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean okay. it, is, it is conveyed on TV but there's no feedback so it's 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 good to have people Come. Give me no feedback. Good. I have 60 texts I just received. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> yes. Here's my little Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. appreciate that. So, oh, Is this your application? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. A uh, couple comments. One, one on your, uh, uh, the uh, marijuana bylaw. I think that, I personally think that was the right way to go at this point in time is not get into the bylaw because it's too complex to change and so forth. And if you feel comfortable with doing it with regulations, and especially with something this new, uh, I think that that's probably a better way of doing it until, the, until that all gets sorted out. Yep. And, and even then, I'm not so sure that, I, you know, there's a lot of things that we've come across in the bylaws that uh, I don't think should have ever been put in bylaws. They should have been done as regulations and uh, policy more so than bylaws, mm -hmm. uh, but that's what we're working on. And in that uh, part of that comment also is uh, we're floundering a little bit as a committee, at the bylaws committee, because I guess we are all have a different idea of what this committee is supposed to be doing. We really don't have a written charge of what going. I, I know what I'm anticipating, but unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, you weren't here for the last meeting, and it kind of came to a surface, the floundering that we're doing. And so I really need a direction for you, and I don't care whether it's verbal, but something I can write down uh, that you want us to do. You know, do you want us to just review the existing laws? Do you want us to fill in the gap where we see there should be a uh, bylaw that never was put in? You know, because we came across something in the Mass General Laws that requires a bylaw. You know things like that because there seems to be a feeling. Well, we're not there to to make new bylaws. And another example of that is is one that floated to the surface at the last meeting was this uh, permanent building committee. Um, we all kind of glanced at it and it was like, whoa, this is a lot of change in this. It, 
maybe we should throw this back in the select boards to see whether they're behind this before we waste any time on it, that. whether you have read this thoroughly, nope. and whether it's something you want to get into. Because, you know, as I said, the way, the way it was presented to us, uh, well, you have the copies of it, uh, it's, I don't think it's something this town is ready for. Um, it needs something down the road, but I don't think it's ready for something like that. So I guess before we waste a lot of time on something like that or any kind of bylaws that they really should come out of yours and say, yeah, we're really interested in, in, in creating something like that. This is what we're trying to do. This is what we're not trying to do. Because like I say we're, we're, we're just floundering a little bit on that. And that, so. that open that building committee was um, was a proposal, right? It's not a current bylaw that we've no, adopted it's, as No, town, it's not right? a, it's not a, um, right. a skip presented and right. uh, it was taken out of, I guess, a couple other town bylaws and from reading it, um, I think my it was, gut reaction well, is it's taken out from a lot bigger towns and where they have people, a lot more diverse community and a lot more volunteerism to make that kind of mit commitment. I, you know, there again, my own personal opinion and that's not, I'm not speaking for the committee. Um, it gave them I think it's worked fine, like with the garage. When you needed somebody, you appointed a committee. It worked out fine. I, you know, I, you know, it's not like we have multiple buildings all in a row. And I don't um, want to limit the power of the select board or any other. Um, I haven't read that bylaw in depth, but I think my first concern was that we were ceding a lot of power to that committee without. Um, and, and, and giving up our own independent power, and I, I don't think that's something I'm I anxious didn't want to, to go do. There, but yes, yeah. That, so that's, um, you know, it's it's a way of another, you know, I think it's not elected bit, people to kind of be making major decisions, and they don't really, they're not accounted. I I, I, th I think it's a little bit of micromanaging too, but uh, could be some of that as well. Uh, but there again, you know, before we you, go any farther, we want. Why I think we need the select boards. Uh, yeah. Uh, it sounds like, I, yeah, why don't we table that one? But I, I, I think the whole idea of this originally was that um, you would be, have a, no one had, had a big picture overview of the bylaws. And so what your number one priority was to eliminate the dead or, or out take date. out yeah. the, the, the old, Old ones that were have we have had new bylaws made that, but we never deleted the old ones. Right, and so that was the, the number one thing. And then the second thing was to cover the gaps that were missing, like you pointed one out, which we corrected at this town meeting, was the uniforms. We we've been, you know, buying um, boots and and t-shirts and stuff for the town, um, you know, highway department. And there was no bylaw to cover that, so you, we put one in. So the idea was to, you know, cover the gaps that a bylaw was missing, or because of our new language, there there was a gap. Um, so, so you really, and there again, it sounds like this is my, what I had envisioned as uh, as a committee, and uh, but there is is that we're to review. Uh, look for uh, amendments to try to bring it up to date, mm -hmm. uh, contradictions, and or uh, suggest some new bylaws if it looks like there's a hole that needs to be blocked. Right. Okay, so one it's, of the, it's, there's a lot of but not, but not, we're not trying to rewrite them. No, mean, you no, know, it, it, no, 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 not yet. <clears throat> but there I mean, is, we gotta get rid of, we have to well, go, through, we have to have the big picture first. Well, right. can I just say something here, and I've said mm -hmm. this at meetings, the goal of the committee is not to be a policy making committee. It's right. a cleanup committee. It's a where have there been problems? And if there is a, an, a place where you come across something that's just messy, it's been interpreted different ways, then it needs to go to another whatever group, like the Capital Improvement. We had that meeting uh, if, to get their input on the policy piece. But again, this was a big initiative of mine because they are a mess. They are very out of date. We need yes. to update these. Right. You came to mind, Bruce, as a detail man. Absolutely. I know him. I trust his, no his work. And um, the, the goal was to, like, you could get lost in this forest and trees here, as, right. as he and I tend to do. It's like, over, oh, well, this and this. 
And I think we've got some good people on that committee who, who can focus more and just say, okay, let's take this step by step. And I think that's kind of how it needs to be approached. Just, like Barbara has done this very well for the personnel committee. Some, someone in her capacity as the treasurer and that hat she wears, she does a lot of personnel HR uh, management issues that come up with time and leave time and things mm -hmm. like that. Well, she's identified problems in our bylaw, personnel bylaw, that when we move to a policy, we should correct. Or we've, she made those changes over the few years. Those are the kind of things I imagine at this first year of the committee existing would be dealing with. What do we keep bumping up against as a problem that we really need to correct the language or edit or whatever? Um, things that don't make sense. And then, you know, Bruce has run into this continuous problem of where a bylaw and a regulation, is it a bylaw, is it a regulation? We've run into issues with um, two big issues that we've had councils spend time on. What is the status of the issue of who pays for capital improvements for the, for the sewer system mm -hmm. and treatment plans? What is the status of the, of the, church, of the uh, library building and the mm -hmm. trustees? These are issues that are, some of these are Im embedded, for better or worse, in our, our bylaws are missing that we need to address. So yep. I think what Carolyn was saying is about as a first pass are those areas that are just mistaken, you know, just wrong, or I'll use the term anachronistic, they're outdated, they don't work anymore, and, and you know. Or we've written, rewritten e easy, a you new know, piece, what do they call that? and that doesn't slide in. Well, right. one, of, one of the big things that I've read and, and had a lot of issues with is, I'm not sure, I'm but, gonna say five, six years ago, we voted a new stormwater uh, bylaw. And uh, it w I think that it was modeled after the state and there were some technical reasons why we should have that. It had something to do with getting grants or I don't know, what, what was that? Something that to do with the state that we needed a stormwater bylaw. Anyways, uh, the, the problem is, is that we had regulations with dealing with site plan review. It talks about drainage and runoff and things of that nature. And the two don't jive. So if you get an engineer and it's come to the planning board and you know we're looking for particular items and he says, well, I followed your bylaws. Well, you didn't follow section C of the right. stormwater bylaw. And yeah. they look it up and says, well, that's not what the bylaws, this bylaw says this and this says that. And, yet, and then we've had a couple of engineers say that the state regulations is yet a third different thing. So which one do you want us to follow? You know, and, well, we've, and we've, we've had that. We've excluded zoning we, yeah. and personnel, and personnel from their at this work. Point. Right. But, but perhaps planning board or whomever should take this up again. I, to, I was just going to say we should have that looked at if that is a problem because the whole yeah. point was to avoid um, being an MS4 community. That's so, what I was trying to say. Um, right. Yeah, so. Um, but but I, guess, I guess part of it is, is, be, is I know, our, I know our original charge was bylaws, okay? General not bylaws. Yeah, general bylaws, mm -hmm. not regulations. But as we get into it, the bylaws and regulations are contradictory. And as I said before, you know, somebody really needs to look at the regulations as well. well because you can you pass, be, you know, well, you can eliminate some of the bylaws, but the regulations that are still out of date well, are still there. I'll, was, give you, I'll give you an I example. I think you should give us the list. That would yeah, be what's helpful. Just, is, well, I mean, should, I, are we supposed to be working on a regulation? And I'll give you a good example. It's, it, it, oh, by the regulations, it's still legal to push stuff, stuff over the rim of the dump up there. Okay? It's, uh, that goes back to when it was a, uh, well, a, yeah, but, a okay. hole in the ground. Okay, you know? so right. regulations are adopted by boards. Right. So I think if you see something like that, draw that to the attention of me. Yeah. <laughs> And whatever board would and we'll, adopt we'll, anything, and yeah. then that's where we would change it. Yeah. Well, the but landfill it, is capped, so that's that would, what he said. That would, yeah. yeah. So but that the, would but be, there's a, there's a whole bunch of regulations for. Uh, um, actually, I think it's in bylaws. If, I, if I'm about the uh, transfer station, which are obsolete. Well, then you those know, get pulled. The, that, that, and that's what I, that's what yeah. I'm saying. You know, so yeah. and then there's cross references that get into the regulations on those as well. So. You know, it, it, it's 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 growing. It's growing by the meeting. Let's put it that Can way. Can I ask you a question? Um, we started out this group. It was just uh, you, me, and and I think Judy Kundal was at the first meeting. And we had um, the folks or a representative from our code book. 
and uh, it was very interesting. Yeah, uh, it was. I, I want to have her come back again, and you know, all the resources that exist through um, uh, what are they called e now? E they're e code, but e -code, yeah. well, the, the publishing, the name of the company that oh, we yeah. uh, and, and they work through Barbara. Code publishing, I think, is what it is. Is it? Uh, yeah, it's no fancy name. name. Really. Um, Good people. Uh, any rate, um, that was really interesting. I felt like I, I'd like to like spend a week at you know just exploring all these options, and then we had uh, my colleague um, who's been on a bylaw review committee for years in Beckett, and how they've approached their work. Um, and we just set this group up as the bylaws review advisory committee. Number one, to not load them up with too much and. Well, that's number two also. We didn't want to scare them. <laughs> we want to give them a chance to start looking at things. And then ideally, a bylaw review committee is a standing committee. It's a committee that continues right. to exist and meet as necessary. And, and they go slowly through things. And I think the difficulty with our bylaws is that it's so big and has waited so long for the kind of look that you've gone, given it that it's, it's, it's hard to do that. Um, but I have a question for you. Barb did speak with me about having the code folks um, actually present a proposal to help the process. Did you have more conversation no, about that? No. Um, uh, there again, uh, they were supposed to send a proposal. Yeah. I'm, I think what I think is going to happen and what Barbara thinks is going to happen is two different things. I think you know, their job is to codify the code, the existing code. Uh, they're not going to get in. I don't believe that they're going to get into changing the wording of it. I think that's two different things. I, I, um, I actually do think, and I'm trying to remember what she presented at. I'm sorry if we're going on here about this. Maybe you don't want us to do this. No, but um, that they go above and beyond. They actually have done like charter review work and caught a, it's not just a numbering well, system. It's bigger than that. Right. So why and don't we wait and see? But I didn't know that's whether, all, that's all, that, whether that's you had something yet. That's why I didn't bring it up because yet. I want okay. to wait and see what exactly what is going to come back from I believe it was Suzanne or something yes yeah, but Bruce when you see when you see a bylaw that references you know the tipping at the the dump when you know the dump is closed well yeah and that's, the, one, that's what I said so as a matter of fact I, you know I got a couple of regulations out. right right here on top as a matter of fact did you, did you just said you have no, no nothing to do with bus stops or anything on a, on a state highway Okay, one is uh, one-way streets. It says there shall be no parking on westerly side of Park Street. That's a, one of your regulations, okay? Uh, uh, bus, stop, uh, bus stops, it says it shall be approved by the uh, uh, chief of police and the select board before any bus stop goes into effect. Uh, so that's in your regulations. I, you know, but so that's probably not on the state highway. Cause well, we, if park, we don't what about Park Street? That's state highway. Yeah. And you put on parking restrictions on that by your regulations. So this is what I'm saying. I'm not, and I'm not condemning anybody. Don't get me wrong. It's yeah. just that this is you know, your regulations books are filled with this kind of stuff. Well, then and, and the ones that you know are no, you know, like the dump ones. Well, what I'm just asking you is, don't expect too much too fast out of this committee, no. because it, 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 the, the job the Hard job work. grows with every meeting. <laughs> Well, Bruce, what I'd like to suggest is, is think about the, the sewer study committee, the same thing. You know, yeah. we, we start yeah. with this project, and then we go to this plant, and then we go to this pipe. And right. Then we, you know, before we know it, we got this right. whole and maze of know. things to go with. Right. What, and that was what just, I suggest that was is with, when you see things like what you're talking about, the rim the of the dump or the park street, just make a list of these things and say, look, at, we don't see that there's a need for any of these, and turn that list over, and then those things can be dealt with. You know, as you come across them, you don't have to, you know, oh, I, try right. to compile the whole thing right. and then come say, okay, you know, this is all our, you know, reviews yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. And going going on to that subject, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, so I have this draft uh, that he sent down. And going along with the assumption that management committees are going to be set up for um, this. Uh, management areas? For, uh, for the sewer? For the sewer management for, area, yeah, yeah, management areas, whatever you want to call them, uh, going to all his tasks and so forth, he set up. And I don't know whether it's uh, something that should try to be done before next Thursday. I think it would benefit everybody because, 
I think the first conversation is going to say, well, if we have management area, why is everything lumped together instead of in one big ball? Right. Because it's lumped together as Captain Lay, the, the, all the tasks include Captain Lathrop and both both uh, uh, plants as a unit, right. rather than broken apart. Well, we know we don't need Captain Lathrop; that's taken care of uh, at this point in time. And and if we're going to try to concentrate on one or the other, then those tasks should be broken down for the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant and the Old Deerfield Wastewater Treatment so we can approach them as different tasks if we're going to try to uh, move this thing forward on two different parallel planes, and especially if you're going to have management districts that are going to pay for those two different planes. Am I well, making any sense? Or? I think this is something that we're going to talk about next Thursday while, you know, Mr. Well, Perkins Well, I'm here just wondering whether this, this needs to be addressed, yeah, you know, whether uh, he can break would, it down so that we yeah, can get a little that's, better that's, exactly. that's the conversation yeah, that's prior right. to next Thursday. Well, well, I don't well, know prior to that. I think this well, is... I can give him a heads up, and, yeah. and I think Kevin may be watching, so he might... And, yeah, and I did we, speak to Kevin briefly yeah. a few weeks ago about the whole thing being broken down. Uh, and, I think and we trying to concentrate on one one part of it, you know, there's like we've said right. before that there's, there's four s different parts. And but that's with Kevin. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm talking about with uh, Dave. No, he's Prickett. relayed that. You know, yeah, he's, he's related. related. He's in touch. With Kevin's oh. been in. Con has oh, been okay. Because this is the last. This is the last right. thing I have. And, and that was from. It's the same one. We went on hold since bef just before town meeting and before the election. Yeah, we wanted to yeah. wait and see, discuss it very publicly about waiting before readdressing yeah. the contract. Well, there again, itself. as I said, this, I'm just going on the last communication that I have, okay? So based, based, they, that based is, on that. Right. Okay, so. That is it. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Okay. And I guess that's it. All right. All right. Thank All right. you. Thanks for All right, being Bruce, ready. thank you. Thank you, Bruce. I appreciate we'll your bylaw. We'll on the bounce house committee. Um, hmm? Commitment. We'll expect you on the bounce house committee. <laughs> no, the bylaw no bounce house right committee. <laughs> I, I already have one B committee. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for doing that. I, I, I know it's really frustrating because it's a big mess. F committee, S committee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't need another committee. Uh, don't your eyes like that. No, I'm trying to think of the other committees that you're on oh, that have know, other initials. Yeah, I know I got those, but Emily, I think there are more. But that's all. What, all right. um, oh, well, let's adjourn the meeting, and then okay. I just want to talk through two okay. and see happened. what your interests are. Don't go to Arizona again. Right, do we have a motion to? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.